Okay, lecture five on non-enzymatic browning, which will be quite a lengthy lecture, so there'll be at least two, maybe three parts to the video. Uh, topics. Uh, reducing sugars in brackets because it's a bit of a revision topic. Okay, browning reactions. There are two main classes of browning reactions associated with food. Those caused by enzymes and those caused by chemical reactions unmediated by enzymes. Uh, we'll be discussing enzymic browning in another lecture. Here we'll concentrate on non-enzymic browning reactions, and in particular, the Maillard reaction, or the Maillard reaction, as some people call it. Uh, okay, uh, this is Louis Camille's Camille Maillard, a French physician who first identified the reaction between amino acids and proteins. Produces a range of complex and attractive flavours and colours. Uh, the video linked here, click on the frying pan image, is linked to a chemistry world resource and the Maillard reaction. Chemistry is quite complex, we don't need to know the full details, just the basics of the process and some implications for food production. Uh, so if you have some onions or pan and some bicarbonate of soda, that is to say sodium hydrogen carbonate, you can try the experiment yourself. I won't be opening videos during the lecture as usual, uh, you've got the links to them so you can open them yourself. This picture of a piece of French bread there, a brioche, in tribute to old Louis. Uh, they, they're important in, in cooking. They give complex, attractive flavour and colour to a wide range of foods, which, which these are just a small range of examples. So we've got beers, we've got toasted breads, we've got beans, which could be cocoa or coffee beans, uh, crisps and chips, soy sauce. Um, and lots, lots and lots of things. Oh, there's some chocolate cocoa beans there down the bottom left. Um, outside of biochemistry, our, our reactions we do in our bodies, it's possibly, probably the most widely used chemical reaction done by human beings. Those will see it's a very complex reaction with multiple ramifications. Uh, 2012 was the centenary of Man Maillard's uh, insight. If you click on the link there with his picture in the 100th birthday, 100th birthday cake, you'll get some more background on that. He does a range of things. It says that they're almost all cooking. It's basically all, all cooking. This takes place over 100 degrees centigrade. Uh, so boiling an egg, for example, wouldn't involve Maillard reactions necessarily. Uh, it produces thousands of flavour compounds and has huge influences on things like colour, flavour and texture, as we'll discover a bit later on. Okay, so here's a video showing what happens to coffee beans as they are roasted. Um, without this, your coffee would be very different and somewhat less pleasant experience, and I suspect coffee would never have been a thing. Uh, a similar process involved in the roasting of cocoa beans. So again, watch the video yourself. Yeah, okay, I've already said that. Uh, yeah, so we've got some red things there. There's some good things. It improves flavour and produces attractive colours, but it also damages proteins and may form harmful products. Uh, acrylamide being the most well-known, uh, at least recently. Okay, so the chemistry. Uh, the reaction is very complex, both in terms of its general chemistry and the huge range of products it can produce. Here we're just going to focus on the basics of the reaction, important products and factors that influence the reaction. Uh, but first, we probably need to talk a little bit about reducing sugars. Uh, but just to summarise this, this slide, Maillard reactions are reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars. So the example there is the sugar xylose and the simple amino acid lysine, which goes off two very simple molecules, which go off to produce hundreds of, of products. Okay, so from biochemistry, you should recall redox, the fundamental chemical principle that when mo one molecule is oxidized, another is reduced. Uh, reduction sugars are reduced when they take part in the reaction, here with an amino acid, uh, where the other molecule is oxidized. Um, before we go any further, note that simple sugars like glucose exist in the ring form in solid, but when they dissolve in water, the ring opens, exposing the aldehyde group at C1, so this group up here. And that's a group where the Maillard reaction takes place. Uh, so I've, I've included this in the notes for the module. Uh, see this presentation and video, which includes a reminder about oxidation and re reduction reactions, uh, with the relevant slides being included on this slide here. Uh, there's also a video for the, that, that presentation as well. It's in the playlist for this module. Okay, just some some 
new concepts we may you may not have discovered it. I'm not sure we did this in biochemistry last year. Uh, reducing sugars is said to contain a hemiacetal group. Uh, so this is a sugar molecule. The R, R groups, as you, as you may recall, uh, the other parts of the molecule. So we've only shown a little bit of it here. An OH group and the H group. And this is said to be a hemiacetal group. That is where an OH group and an OR group are attached to the same carbon atom. So that one here. Um, yeah, so a R group is just a placeholder. It means any other group. It could, for example, be a hydrogen atom or something much more complicated. Now, non reducing sugars have a carbon atom which has two OR groups attached to it. Such sugars can't undergo reduction reactions because there's basically nothing there to reduce. It can't lose a hydrogen. Uh, therefore, it won't take part in Maillard reactions. Uh, glucose is a hemiacetal group. Maybe a little hard to see in the normal representation of the molecule, but if you if you you draw part of the molecule with a hemiacetal group, you should see why this is. Uh, as a tu tu tutorial activity, pause the video and make sure you can explain why D fructose is a reducing sugar. So explanation of why D glucose is there. Uh, so pause the video. Pause the video now. Okay, uh, this is slightly more complicated, but if you look closely, you can see we have a carbon atom which is attached to both an OH and an OR group. So there's the OR group and there's the OH group, making it a hemiacetal, therefore it will take part in, in, in Maillard reactions. Sucrose doesn't have hemiacetal group, uh, either in the, in the linkages between the two uh, two sugars, the two monosaccharides, are in the terminal uh, terminal group, so it can't be reduced and doesn't take part in Maillard reactions. What about lactose? Here's another question for you. Have a little think about this. Is lactose a reducing or a non-reducing sugar? So pause the video again. Okay, pausing the video. Lactose has both an acetal and a hemiacetal group, the latter of which can take part in reduction reactions. So lactose is a reducing sugar. Uh, though if you had an equal weight of, say, fructose or glucose compared to an equal weight of lactose, the two monosaccharides would produce more Maillard reactions because a lot of this, uh, a lot of the lactose molecule doesn't take part in these reactions. What about starches? Starch is a polysaccharide. Although it has a hemiacetal group at the terminus of the molecule, which is highlighted there in red, it can also have several hundred monomer units of acetal groups linking them. As such, the contribution of starch to Maillard reactions is minimal. However, note that once starch is hydrolyzed, such as in cooking, this will break the macromolecule into smaller units, which may increase the extent of Maillard reactions, but maybe not very significantly, but it does depend on the circumstances. And basically, how long are you cooking it for and how high a temperature you're cooking? Right, um, stages of the Maillard reaction. Okay, if you want more details on Maillard reaction chemistry, there are many good sources, both in textbooks and online. For this module, you only really you need to know what we will discuss here. There are three stages in the Maillard reaction. It's said to be initial, the formation of what's so-called shift base. Uh, an intermediate, the... Uh, what's called an amidora reagent, and then well, I mean, it said it's the final reaction there, a stuck at de degradation, but after this, even more ke complex chemistry would, can take place. But it's a bit outside the scope of our discussion. Don't worry if chemistry isn't your thing. As usual, if you can describe the reaction words, that's just fine. Um, here's a simplified reaction scheme. R and R2, just mean other groups respectively, as usual. Um, respectively the rest of a sugar and the rest of the amino acid. This just makes it easier to draw the reaction. Here a reducing sugar reacts with amino acid to produce a shift base, which is sometimes called an end glycoside. And there's a the definition of a shift base in the red box. Uh, we'll bring it on. A functional group which is a carbon nitrogen double bond. These are quite rare and they're quite reactive. It's unstable. It rapidly breaks down to form something called a ketosamine. Uh, this is a compound containing both an amino acid group, so an NH group, and a carbonyl group. Again, it's not very stable and can do a wide range of further reactions. 
This step is one of the main reactions why the Maillard reaction produces so many complex flavours and colours. Um, yeah, okay. There's also the possibility of fission products. Uh, the cotosamine we saw on the previous slide can break up, it can fragment, and you can produce products that include things like acetal, diacetyl, and pyrovaldehyde. Uh, these are again reactive, and undergo many further reactions, adding to the complexity uh, of the process. Um, reductones are compounds that have two OH groups, one of which is very close to a double bond. Um, it, it's and again, they will react very, very easily, producing a range of different com different compounds. Um, Hydroxymethylferferol is a cyclic aldehyde producing sugar degradation through Maillard processes. It's found in a lot of foods, including breakfast cereals, breads, dairy products, fruit juices, honey. We'll talk about honey in a little while and the health implications for this particular product. Um, okay, so what happens next? It gets very complicated. You don't need to remember this, nor do I expect you to quote this in the exam. Uh, one thing to notice, perhaps, is that the final products are things called melaninoids, uh, melanoids rather, which are complex brown polymers containing nitrogen. Uh, there are a large number of these, many with complex, often yet to be determined structures. Uh, coffee melanoids, after the coffee has been roasted, can account up to 25% of the weight of the bean. Uh, with a c amount increasing with the severity of the roasting. And there's a typically complex example there. Uh, if you're interested, the article there goes into more detail, but again, it's a bit outside the scope of the module. Uh, but you should read around these topics, so it's a good idea. Okay, I'm going to pause this there, and we'll start again on Maillard, undesirable Maillard reaction products.